The Column 2 tool is a great tool to use for more organic shapes. It is digitizing all of one side and then hitting enter and then digitizing all of the other side in the same direction, hitting enter and then inputting the stitch directions and you'll drag those across the form. It's a great tool for shapes that have very disparate edges. One has a lot of bumps and the other one's completely smooth. They don't have to have the same number of input points on either side and they definitely don't have to be the same. They're great for elements that you know you're going to scale because they'll scale a little bit more easily than some of the other tools. Let's take a look at how to use that tool. So I'm going to open up a graphic. That graphic is located on local disk C in the designs folder. There's another folder called graphics. Inside that folder, I'm going to change my files of type to all graphics and I'm going to grab columns.bmp. This is the same graphic we used when digitizing the column one. I'm going to scale the graphic down. I'm going to scale it to four inches wide. Hit enter. It's going to scale. And then I need to choose my tool. So I'm going to go back to my input toolbar. And anytime I have a black triangle in the corner, it has a flyout. So I'm going to hover over my main column tools. Right now the column one is selected. If I click and hold for a half a second, the flyout becomes available and I can come over and I can choose my column two. If you're not sure which one is which, you can hold for a half a second or hover for a half a second, pardon me, and a tool tip will come up. When I let go, I now have the column two selected. So let me zoom in here and we'll look at how to utilize this tool. So this tool is um, used by digitizing all of one side. So with a column one, we started with an end. With a column two, we're going to do all of one side in a single direction. So let me come down here and we'll look at this shape. And I'm gonna grab my markup tool, which is outside of Design Shop. It's a separate tool that I use just for these webinars. And what we'll do is we will essentially start here, if I can get it to go, and then we'll go all the way in one direction We'll do that side first, and then we'll hit enter, and then we'll come back and going in the same direction, we'll do all of the other side. So we'll do that second, and then we'll hit enter, and then we'll put in stitch directions going across the form. So let me clear that off of there, and come back to actually being able to use Design Shop again. All right. So, zoom in here, and I will have my tool selected. I'm going to come across the form, so going in one direction. Anytime I have a transition, I'm going to have that straight point, so it's going to be a left click. I started with a left click, transition, left click. Here's a curve, right click, transition, left click. Come all the way across. I'm holding Alt to keep that nice and level. Left click for a transition, right click for a curve, left click for a transition, holding Alt, coming across, left click, I let go of Alt, right click for a curve, left click for a transition, all the way to the end, left click. So now that I'm done with one side, I'm going to press Enter on my keyboard. And now as soon as I move my mouse, I get another <clears throat> line, and this one's a little bit darker. This is my end line. So now I'm going to define the end and I'm going to start my second side. So I'm going to left click to start that second side, holding Alt to keep it level. Anytime I have an angle, I'm going to left click. So this side, because it's all angles, is nothing but left clicks. And you'll notice that I don't have to line these points up with any of the points on the other side. They can be completely independent of each other. Finishing this up all the way to the end. I hit enter. And now it has generated stitches, but my cursor has another icon beside it and it's a little dumbbell and that is um, my stitch direction input. So now I can click and drag across the form. When I let go, it will input a stitch direction line. Let me hide my graphic and change the color of this stitching so we can see my wireframe outline is in blue. My stitch direction lines are blue lines going across with squares on either end. 
and I can continue to input stitch directions by dragging across the form. If I input one that I really didn't want, I can click on one of those squares, press delete on my keyboard, and it will go away, and the stitches will continue to fan between the last two um, stitch direction lines or the end and the stitch direction line. Once I've put in all the stitch direction lines I want, I can hit enter to complete the shape and I'm ready to move on with my next column two. Let me turn this back on and let's move over to the S. I'm gonna zoom out just a touch so we can see it a little bit better. So same types of transitions that we did with the column one in that we, let me mark this up a little bit. Grab blue, grab my markup tool. So when we are looking at this, we are going to look at where these curves start and end, and then where they really transition. So this curve kind of comes around and then it really ends here, or it really transitions here and then the same thing, we have kind of a little straight path and then it transitions into another curve. One thing you might wanna do while you're marking this up on, if you're doing this on tracing paper or on a printed piece beside you to keep track of what you're doing, you might wanna decide where you wanna break these curves up. So you could do them in half or you might break them up in thirds so that you don't exceed 180 degrees in any set of three points. All right, so that's how I would probably divide up this curve. Let me come back and I'm going to erase this and go back to my tools. Make sure that I have column two selected, which I do. Now I'm gonna do all of one side and then hit enter and I'm going to do all of the other side in the same direction. So I'm gonna start here with a left click going to curve this around, so right click, come around, don't exceed 180 degrees, right click, find that transition, left click, come across, transition, left click, right, right, left. I'm at the end, so I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm going to do this end. So I come back up. So I'm going the same direction. I'm traveling through the, the shape, going the same direction. I dictate my end. I left click and then I continue around. Right, right, left for that transition, left for that transition, right. And I could get that a little bit closer. Let me backspace. Right right finish this up left now when i hit enter it's going to try to generate stitches from this end all the way to this end and it doesn't have any guidelines as to how to do that so it may look a little bit scary i hit enter and it's doing its best it's definitely straight across here straight across here but it's not aiming towards the center of those circles or pardon me the center of those curves so let's see if we can't help this out by dragging a couple of direction lines across here. I'm gonna do it where it transitions. So I'm gonna drag across here. I'm aiming at kind of the center of this, and then now I am kind of at the center of this. And now with just a couple of stitch direction lines, I can hit enter. Those stitches are fanning throughout the form, and it looks pretty nice and clean. So that's how you'd use a column two to create simple shapes. Now let's go back and look at how to create more complex shapes like these letters. We did this with a column one. You can do them again with a column two. And let's go maybe with a red this time. So I'll start probably with a walk. I'll digitize to tack everything down. And I can start on the outside or the inside, doesn't matter. Starting with left clicks, I'm gonna go all the way through. 
I'm doing this a little differently than I did with the column one. This time I'm choosing to exit in the middle. It's completely up to you how you want to do it. Finish that up, hit enter. I've got my stitches here. I could, I could help it out with a couple of stitch direction lines to kind of even this out. There we go. There we go. Now, I ended here. One thing I could do is I could choose to move this exit point up to here. And now it will generate its own travel stitches so I don't have to worry about it. The other thing that I could do, if I knew that I wanted to come across this E and finish this middle piece, I may want to have some stitches extend underneath that cross um, bar. So if I edit some of that back in, I can have a point here, sorry, edit my transitions in, I can move my exit point. So wherever I have that line by my cursor, I can add a point to that wireframe line. So I have a point here where it transitions, a point here where it transitions, and then I can move that middle piece under it. I can exit at that transition, and then I can grab my column two, and I can start here, come all the way to the end, do all of one side, hit enter, come back, do all of the other side, hit enter, and I'll just give it one stitch direction right across the middle, straight down, hit enter, and now when I go into 3D, I have a nice clean E. So that's another way to digitize this shape. Let's move over to the A. Again, we did this with a column one, but you can do it with a column two. I'm gonna do this one in green. Let's digitize a tack down stitch. And this time I'll do the crossbar again last. The other time I did it first, completely depends on how you plan on doing this. I will do this one with a cap. So I'm gonna go up one side. I'm gonna find where that cap would be. I'm going to left click, then I'm gonna hit enter. I'm going to follow up that other side, finish that end, come up, left click, hit enter. That finishes that. I'm gonna give it a stitch direction, drag across the form, hit enter. Now I can grab my walk normal. I'll travel up, hit enter. I'll grab my column two, do one side, kind of give it its little hat, hit enter, do the other side, give it its little hat, hit enter, give it its stitch direction, hit enter, and then I'll finish this up with the other side. All the way down, hit enter, all the way down here, hit enter, give it a stitch direction, and now I would probably go back, grab my exit point and move it up so that I can finish this crossbar. If I needed to give myself a little bit of overlap, I could do that too, edit this in. Sometimes that's easier than digitizing it, up to you. Let's grab this and do the same thing here, give myself a little bit of overlap. And whether you do this first or last depends very much on your application and um, where you want to begin and end your elements and how you want to push that material. So I'm going to finish this up by going across the bottom, hitting enter, going across the top of that crossbar, hitting enter, and giving it a stitch direction. And now I've finished that A. So I've done a couple of letters, a couple of more curvilinear shapes, and one that's completely irregular and more organic. All of these were done with a column two, and you can digitize those um, more irregular shapes or pretty much anything you want with that column two. It's really user preference. Column one, you dictate stitch direction as you're digitizing. Column two, you do it after you've input the shape, but both will work very well for any of those medium size multi-stitch line elements that you want to digitize.